Hey, what's going on guys? This is Starblast Studios coming in with a brand new figure review. Today guys, we have a very special review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Kong Studios Super Dragon Ball Heroes version of Goku. So the reason why this review is so special today is because this figure is completely funded and given to me by 5ktoys.com. Yeah, they pretty much gave me this figure just so that you can, I can go ahead and review it. I was already going to buy it anyway. I had it in the mail and they are like, hey, you know what, Starblast? Uh, we got you. Do a review, promote our site, and we got it. And you know what? I am perfectly happy and okay with that because all of a lot of the figures that I've reviewed here on this channel are figures that I have gotten from 5K Toys. Like, there's Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, Battle Damage Vegeta, their Kong Studios Resurrection F version Goku Black, uh, their Demonical Fit Abomination, which I just previously reviewed. If you have not watched that review, go ahead and watch that. These are all figures I've gotten from 5ktoys.com, and so I'm just really, really happy that 5K Toys is giving this figure to me so that I can review today. I'm incredibly happy, but anyways, without any further ado, let's get into this box. We do have a really nice artwork bit of Goku right over there, and as for the rest of the boxes, there's not really anything else going on. So, let's actually go ahead and show how this figure is in the clamshell. This is exactly it right over here, and uh, yeah, it's very small, and you're probably wondering where all of the accessories are going to be. Well, uh... Actually, the accessories came in Ziploc bags that are all, like, uh, right behind the box, like, the, the clamshell when you ho go ahead and open it up, which is a little bit interesting to me. I don't exact, I don't know exactly why they're doing this right now. It's probably just a thing so that they can conserve space and be able to, like, use less plastic when making these boxes. That's probably just it right there. I'm not, again, I, I don't full-on know why they're doing this, but it, it doesn't bother me too much. It's not that big of a deal. But, yeah, I'm totally fine with me. Anyways, without any further ado, let's get this guy out. Alright guys, so here we got the figure opened up and out of the packaging. Now, if you guys remember my review of the Kong Studios Goku Black, I was a little bit critical about that figure because there was it did so much right, but the only real problem that I had with it was the way that they handled the paint. And if you see right over here on the side, I still do have this figure, and you can see that the way that they did the matte finish like was a really like ineffective way of going and doing that. But with this figure, we don't really have that problem. They did this figure in like a really nice... Uh, colored orange and you still sort of have like that matte finish going on around with the pants and with the plastic that they used They absolutely killed it did a, a lot better job with this figure I think than they did with their Goku black and also I think the resurrection F Goku which I actually have over here uh, Like a little bit for comparison. I actually did go ahead and get get it bought But like it was a uh, this was like a thing that was shaded by uh, T toys on Instagram uh, but yeah this figure like, with the way that they handled it, they definitely did the paint a lot nicer. And if you remember one thing about it when it came to the Goku Black, which I did not like, and this is the same issue that I had with the with the, um, with the the Resurrection F Goku, it's that the skirt piece, because of the fact that it is a hard plastic, it makes it so that moving the legs around is very difficult. It is a little bit of a hindrance when you're actually trying to articulate it. But this right here, I'm just incredibly happy with. I just dropped a figure in the background. I'm just really happy with this because with this figure... They made this into a soft plastic, and because they did this with a soft plastic, he is able to move the legs around really, really nicely, no issues at all whatsoever, and you can get the posability that you want, and none of the paint is coming off. Everything about this is, like, really good. Now, I do have a couple of issues with this, which is, we're gonna get into that, which it is, unfortunately, with the face coming off, and I, I was initially confused as to why that is, so... Let's go ahead and uh, take out this figure real quick. Here we have the Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku with a Kong Studios uh, wavy hair thing. This I actually am really regretful that I didn't actually go ahead and review the wavy hair set because it, it's a really nice set to go with your Ultra Instinct Goku figure. But as you can see right here, when you compare both of the faces, you can see that they're not quite the same exact sculpt, which is what I initially thought. I realized that the reason why the face does not actually fit onto the hair as well as the regular Ultra Instinct Goku faces do is because I'm pretty sure this is the exact same mold as the SH Figure Arts Goku Black. And I, re and I realized this because when Demonical Fit initially came out with their very first uh, Ultra Instinct Goku hair set using the Awakening Goku faces, I was initially thinking that it would be better if they used this face sculpt in order for them to go and do that. And I did a little bit of an edit with that on my Instagram a while back. and. The reason, and so that takes me over here to where the reason why the faces are falling off and they don't quite fit on the actual Goku, it's because it's the the sculpt from the Goku Black 
is just too different and it does not fit as securely. That's the only reason why I'm led to believe that it's not necessarily like a QC issue as to the reason why the face keeps falling off. I think it's because of the fact that they used a mold that just was not designed to go into this hairpiece. But even so, if it was that big of a bother to you, I bet that if you ha have bought this figure, you most likely already have the SH Figure Wars Ultra Instinct Goku in your collection. So you'd probably be able to do something like... And when you apply this face on this actual hair, you're not going to have any of those issues with the face coming off at all whatsoever. If the face goes on like really well, it articulates, but I guess you would have one small problem to where you can see a little bit of inconsistency between the skin tone between the face and the neck right there. So that is one small problem that would be happening with this with this head, but otherwise... I'm at least appreciative of the fact that this company is trying to do stuff that SH Figure Arts does not do and try to give you like these types of faces that you would not normally be able to get otherwise, unless you were a customizer or something like that. But there is play factor to be had here with this figure, as because the face is pretty much designed for Goku Black, you essentially are able to use this for a Goku Black figure. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku Black, and obviously, when you have this face put on your Goku Black figure, this is where I think it excels and it works best, as you have a, a Goku Black face, you, it's, it's obviously going to work for Goku Black, so needless to say, this is why this head swap, I think, really, really works for Goku Black. You're still going to have that face falling off, you know, as a result of it not fitting properly, but you can probably put a little bit of sticky tack behind the face so that it doesn't do that. Still an issue though, you should, I don't feel like you should have had to do that. If they were going to use this, they, I feel like they should have at least redesigned the inner workings of the hair sculpt so that it can fit the faces better, but otherwise, I'm still happy with the playability and them trying to do something different with the Ultra Instinct Goku. And since we are on the topic of Goku's faces, why don't we hop into his accessories? So when it comes to the Ultra Instinct Goku faces, out of the packaging you do get a face of Goku looking straight down, which is Kong Studios take of that scene where Goku was first mastered Ultra Instinct. You do get a closed eye expression, which I'm really surprised that a third party company hasn't done a closed eye expression for a mastered Ultra Instinct Goku figure. And you do get a face of Goku in his base form sort of winking, which you are included in the actual set with a base head for Goku, and I'm glad that they're actually including this with the set as well, as if you did not get the original uh, Kong Studios Resurrection F Goku, you can still get an opportunity to get this face here in this set. Then when it comes to the hands, you do get your typical batch of SH Figure Arts Goku hands, you get the pair of fists which comes right on the packaging, a pair of Kamehameha type hands, a pair of martial arts type hands, a pair of open palm type hands, one instant transmission hand and one uh, Haya Goku type hand or Karate Chop type hand, whatever you want to call this hand. And then just like with the Kong Studios Goku Black, you do get an inter interchangeable uh, belt piece. You can just go ahead and take uh, this belt off right over here on the front and insert uh, this little piece right over here. And just like with the Kong Studios Goku Black, I do actually prefer uh, this belt over than the regular one. But still, I'm really glad that they included that just so you can have that bit of variety and choices. Now before we go ahead and do the head swaps and size comparisons, I actually want to get the articulation out of the way just to feature a couple more issues I may have with this figure. Uh, so the head does go, does look down and it does look pretty far up. You do still have that issue that I've previously mentioned with the face. The bottom neck joint does have a little bit of articulation in there so you can get Goku sort of nodding off like that. I'm still trying to keep that face in there. Um, the arms go around do a full 360. They do, uh, if you, I have to fidget that a little bit just so you can get a little bit more than 90 degrees. Not too bad of a, of a thing though. Uh, you do have a butterfly joint in there as well which is unfortunately colored black as of where it should be orange but I'm not going to give him too much uh, fault for that because SH Figuarts literally does the exact same thing. Uh, you have a bicep swivel right there. You do have uh, the double jointed arms which goes a little bit more than 90 degrees and then you also have your wrist swivel right over here at the hands. No issues with the joints at all. This is what Kong Studios is definitely good at when it comes to the consistency of their joints. Um, now the torso, it does uh, crunch forward this much and it does go back. Uh, I'm trying not to move the legs. It does go back a little bit. You are seeing a little bit of uh, differences in the color of the paint right underneath it, but really not too bad because you're not really going to be going and having Goku uh, crunching back like that all the time. You do got a waist swivel right over here as well. And as previously mentioned, because they did this in a soft plastic, you're, you are getting a lot more range over here. So you can go ahead and have Goku uh, nearly doing the splits. Um, you can get him kicking forward a very decent amount. But I also noticed this in this segment of the review because 
of the fact that this is a stretchy plastic, you do want to be careful as I am already seeing a little bit of stress marks right over here from kicking the foot. It's not too bad, but just something to be taken note of and be careful as you're handling this figure. You do have a really nice thigh swivel. Kong Studios does their thigh swivels way better than Demonical Fits right now. You got the double jointed knees, and for the feet, you do have your double ball peg, which is typical for how, just like how SH Figure Arts does it, you are able to move, make the foot go up, but it actually comes off fairly easy. Uh, you're able to make it go down. You got the ankle, okay, the foot. Now, that's one small problem I'm having with the feet as well, is that they, they do very easily come off. Oh, this one comes off at the top of the double ball peg. That's just very uh, interesting. Um, but yeah, you do have that. That's the one last problem, and you also have like the toe articulation, but... I think that's the only other gripe that I have with this figure, just like the feet can come off really easily, but it's really not that bad of an issue when all things considered and how the quality of this figure came out with the articulation. I'm really impressed with how they handled the quality of this Goku. Now for some size comparison, going from the left to right, here it is with the Demonical Fit Abomination, the Kong Studios Super Saiyan Blue Goku, the Kong Studios Battle Damage Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, and the Kong Studios Limited Edition Goku Black. And then here we have him with the SH Figure Arts Golden Frieza, the event exclusive Ultra Instinct Omen Goku, the Super Saiyan Demonical Fit Goku, or Super Saiyan Blue Goku with the Demonical Fit Super Saiyan Head, and the Demonical Fit Ultimate Gohan. And now for the head swaps, which is my favorite part on any Goku figure, here it is with the Demonical Fit Super Saiyan Goku Head. The Kong Studios Super Saiyan Goku Head. The Kong Studios Super Saiyan 2 Goku Head. The SH Figure Arts Super Saiyan God Goku Head. The Kong Studios Super Saiyan Blue Goku Head. The SH Figure Arts Super Saiyan Blue Goku Head. And the final head swap, which is my personal favorite, is the Ultra Instinct Omen Goku Head. Now, I've had a conversation with my friend Sully where we compared the differences between Demonical Fit and Kong Studios, and where I absolutely see that Demonical Fit excels in making and replicating their own faceplates, except for their uh, Ultimate Gohan figure. Kong Studios, what they are really good at is making the quality and articulation of their figure function even better than De when it comes to Demonical Fit, and making their figure feel like an authentic SH figure arts. But the coolest thing about it is that when it comes to Demonical Fit and Kong Studios is that you can get figures from both of them at 5ktoys.com. Definitely guys, go ahead and go, link will be in the description down below if you guys want to go ahead and pick this figure up. I want to thank 5K Toys so much for sending me this figure in so early so I can review for you guys. And I want to thank every single one of you guys for your continued support. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the comment section. Until then.